Good day, fellow photobook enthusiasts. This is Carrie from Photobook Fanatic, and I'm happy to share with you today the Shutterfly Photobook page recipe for a beach theme day. After you finish watching this video, you will know all the background, frame, text, and embellishment options that were selected to create this page, and then you too can replicate it using Shutterfly Media. For those of you that have seen my other Photobook Fanatic videos, you know that the purpose of my Photobook pages is to use design elements with a high degree of interest and engagement so the reader comes away with an understanding and makes a connection with the people and event that is pictured. A photo book is an awesome way to make a memory that lasts for generations. So let's do a quick analysis of the design process. Start off with interest. There's two parts to that. First is randomizing, which means you avoid using patterns. If we take a look at the pictures, we have a beautiful family photo, which is the showcase image for the page, and it's given prominent status with its large size. There's two other elements that have been added to the photo to draw attention to it, and that would be the text in the dead space of the upper left corner, and we have an embellished ribbon element across both the top and down the left side. The remaining photos on the page are a varying size and placement. You don't notice any rows or columns of pictures, Nothing is lined up perfectly because eclectic placement increases the complexity of the page and forces the readers to stay on the page longer to understand what's going on and thus gives them more opportunity to engage. There's a couple more examples of randomizing on the page. Please note how photos overlap each other. And this is done by using the dead space of photos. Now this is the second time I've mentioned the dead space. What exactly do I mean by this? Well, dead space refers to any part of the photo that lacks importance. It's a part of the photo that if it was eliminated, it would make absolutely no difference at all. But don't get rid of it. You can use this to your advantage by either covering it up with another photo or placing some interesting text there as I've done with the showcase photo, which is the welcome to paradise text. Let's, let me move around a few photos to demonstrate the use of overlapping on dead space. If I take the photo that's in the bottom left corner and I pull it aside, you will see that I'm merely covering up some water. Nothing important there. Let's go to the opposite side, upper right hand corner. I've got a picture here of uh, a lady and a young girl standing by the beach and there seems to be some overlapping here. If I move this out of the way, I'm merely exposing just some sand. It's not important, but Here's another uh, idea. This picture here could have been used as a showcase image. I could have given this a large prominent status and within this sandy area, I could have written a quote about traveling or family or adventure. Wouldn't that have been nice? See, another idea for you to, con to contemplate. Another example of randomizing exists within the photo corner embellishments. We have three photo corners in frost color. You'll notice they are on three different pictures and are placed at three different corners. So if I go to the bottom left photo here, I have the element is in the, is in the upper um, left side of the photo. If I go to the middle photo, the photo corner element is in the bottom left corner. And if I go to this picture that's all the way on the right hand side, I have it in the upper right hand corner. And again, it's put in different corners on different photos to make it random. So we're avoiding patterns. Then additionally, another example of randomizing is the fact that two of the pictures have an additional small white frame that's just to the inside of the frame and that's used to create a bit of extra interest. It's just on two of the photos, not all six, because it needs to be random. Also, an insider hint, by using the framing on photos that are on opposite pages, opposite corners, it causes the eye of the reader to start at one and move all the way across the page to the other. So this way, it encourages the reader to take in the entire page and gives them more of an opportunity to engage with what the event is all about. All right, a quick look at aesthetics, and it appears the tricolor theme for this photo page is the colors of orange, peach, light blue, and the supporting color is white. The sticker embellishments add some interest to the page, but they're small in size so as not to dominate the photos, and they've been placed within open areas or dead space so they don't cover anything important. For engagement, we have a couple different texts on the page for the viewers to read. The Welcome to Paradise establishes that this is a friendly, inviting page 
where the reader should consider a tropical, blissful environment. And if we look at the text in the middle, it says, we were enamored with the tranquil waters and lush tropical flora of Malolo Lele Island, which showcased the paradise of dreams. Our catamaran docked here for lunch where we had a fantastic barbecue buffet. You'll notice the strong emotional vocabulary, words like enamored, tranquil, lush, paradise, fantastic. Sounds really appealing, right? Gives off some warm, fuzzy good vibes and lets the reader know that this event was amazing. If you want to truly understand and embrace these design concepts that I just went over, interest with randomizing and aesthetics and engagement, be sure to watch the other Photobook Fanatic videos dedicated to those concepts. Okay, enough analytics. It's time to reveal the recipe for this page. This photo page was made on Shutterfly for a 12 by 12 photo album, but all the elements I go over are fully compatible and adaptable with Shutterfly albums of other sizes and shapes. We are going to start off with design elements layered at the back of the page and then work our way to those on top. Let's check out the background first. Coming over here to the left side, if I click on backgrounds, we're going to see that I used gradient coral, uh, peachy yellow. And um, if you're uncertain as to how to get this over here on the clipboard, you would go up here to the plus sign, get more backgrounds. And in here, you can type in the title gradient space coral and it pops up here. It's already been checked for me because I've used it. For you, it would be uh, unchecked. You would click on it and the Shutterfly um, media would outline it in red. The add to project button would pop up. You would click on it and then it will pop up over here on the clipboard. Um, with some of these names, if you put in the full name, sometimes Shutterfly has a hard time finding it. So go with part of the name. So maybe we'd just try coral or just try the color that the element is, and it might help you to find it. Um, you will notice on the photo book page that I have some blue at the top and bottom, and that's not part of the background page. That is actually an embellishment ribbon. So let's go check that out. Go to the left, click on embellishments, click on ribbons. And the one that I used is called Polar Gradient. If you're wondering how to get that on the clipboard, same as you did for the background, you go up to the plus sign, click on Get More Ribbons. I've got the search box. We just said that the name of this was Polar Gradient. And if that doesn't pop up, try just the color alone, which is polar. This is it right here. I know it appears gray at the top, but it's actually just showing that it fades out. Um, for you, you would click on it. It would outline it with a red rectangle. The add to project button would light up. You would click on it and it would pop over there, excuse me, in your clipboard. Um, an insider hint, polar refers to the color of um, these ribbons. So if you know uh, with your aesthetics, if you determine what three colors you want to use with your photo book, what a really good idea is, is to go into the embellishments, both stickers and ribbons, look up the color you want by typing into search. It will give you all of the options that are within that color. And that can be really helpful when you're designing your pages. Okay, let's move on here. Um, all of the photos are framed. And let's take a look at what that is going to be. It's called Orange Sherbert Medium Line. Orange Sherbert Medium Line. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the ribbon that's across the top and down the left side of that showcased image. So embellishments, ribbons, and I'm gonna scroll down here. Okay, solid aqua refers to the one that's at the top. Okay, I'm gonna move that down. And the one that's going across the side here, that is banner orange. And then that little thin peach ribbon that's in the middle of both of them, that is simple band apricot. Okay, so now you know how to make that uh, embellishment around the photo. Let's move on to those photo corners. I mentioned those earlier when I was discussing randomization. We're gonna click on embellishments, stickers, and it's right here, photo corners frost. I have three of those within the page. And then if you look on the upper right-hand corner, there's another photo corner, and that one is photo corners tulip. 
I've got one of those. All right, then we have the two frames that are on our opposite corner images. See if I can find those. Here we go. We've got um, frame rec white. This one goes for the bottom picture here, frame rec white. And then the other photo has a different one. That is frame wood rec two. You can see it's a little bit thinner. So those are the two that I used for this photo page. All right, what about those cute little fish here? Got some clownfish. All right, just pass them. There they are. All right. These orange ones, animal clown fish two. I have two of those. And then the lighter orange one is animal clown fish one. I have three of those. Uh, special note: remember that when you're randomizing, as you add your fish, we don't want them all the same size. So we're going to. Uh, change the size of them. We're going to press on the little blue circle, maybe change the way that they're tilted when they're swimming. All of that increases the complexity, which makes it more appealing to the reader because we don't want to do patterns. Patterns are boring and the reader checks out and is no longer interested in looking at your photo page. Okay, along the right hand side, we've got a series of five fish that is simply known as just fish. And at the top of the page, we have just two fish that is going to be called animal orange. And if we look along the bottom of the page, we have a few more um, nice stickers there. Okay, bottom right hand corner, we've got an anchor, and that is watercolor anchor. Bottom left hand side, we've got um, some nice coral here. This is going to be watercolor coral orange. And then what about the use of the dead space? We've got that little sign there. right here. It's called Type Paradise. Uh, I've got a couple more things here. We've got a shell and a starfish or a sea star. The shell is called Clam Shell Slate and the starfish is called Doodle Starfish Orange. All right, and if you're interested in the exact text that I used, um, within this text box here, I double click on it. This was done in back talk, regular, size 18. The color is Satsuma. And I numbered this page because at the beginning of this album, I made a table of contents. Um, and if you watch some of my other videos, you will see the exact table of contents I used in this photo album. And this is gonna be done in Argon, light, size 28. Color is white. All right. I hope that everyone enjoyed learning about this photo book page and please be sure to check out my other videos. I have other recipes and I have more information on those design techniques that I use so you can come be become inspired and make designs yourself. Happy shutter flying everybody. Bye bye.